Hello, people of the internet. Today, I am at Utah with my float truck I built. Basically using part selector bits. And it's supposed to be a truck that isolates you completely from bumps. You'll see I've also added a lot of extras. I've added some black trim here. I've added a front lip down here. And body coloured bumpers and grill. And a bed cover and some lights here and that's about it for the exterior thing other than the wheels and this uh step here it's nothing too crazy but it is supposed to be a more premium model of the d series hence why i've added a lot of extras now if we look at the interior we'll see we have some control for the spotlights there we have various bits. I've decided to de-chrome it since there's not enough chrome on this to ever be a properly chrome vehicle. It would just look a bit awkward to me. We'll see we've got the standard dials and everything but a Roma wheel. And the interior is red since I wanted to make it a slightly more interesting place to sit than the regular Roma. On to the handling. Okay, so let's show you how to drive this thing. We can pull smoothly away if only the frame rate was a little smoother you'll see here it's smooth on the motorway but then so is any car what we need to do is i think take it off road a little so when i get the chance i'll do a bit of crawling up here it has got a locking differential i believe but it's only rear wheel drive and i've badly messed that up i prefer to have this in open mode because it helps avoid it tipping. If it does get a wheel up, it can't put that down power, so that's always useful. But it is climbing fairly well. And this is not an off-road setup, though. It's more road-focused. The off-road D-Series, they are very, very soft. And this is a setup based upon that technology, basically. But it's designed so it's less likely to tip over. The off-road versions will tip over at the very mention of tipping over. But you'll see it still crawls fairly well for what it is. We've got a V8 in here and just a standard rear wheel drive. And we don't want to slice our car open with a sign. So we'd better be careful there. And we're back on the road. Looking on the outside, you'll see it survived well. Other than the front bumper and lights, which have really taken a beating. So you'll see after our little escapade, we have had... Fairly little damage, you'll see the steps are knocked out of place a little on both sides actually. And the bumper is knocked out of place. <laughs> Unless it's even number plate says rocks everywhere. But still, I think this has done remarkably well given the circumstances and it was relatively smooth. Now there is one little test we can do on the motorway and you'll see here if we keep turning it. The vehicle's not tipping over which is always pleasant. The off-road version would tip over, mine they are very easy to tip over. This is the same vehicle I have just taken off-roading, so the suspension hasn't been magically fixed or anything. You'll see here, it lags my computer quite a bit, but I've managed to tip it over there. But it's not got bouncy, it's been fairly reasonable about it at least. Moving on. Now, just to show you a perhaps slightly more in-depth example of how off-roading is in this, I'm going to go down this hill here, but from the exterior camera, so you can see the suspension doing its job. And you'll see it's not ultra-high raised off the ground, because it is mainly a road-focused vehicle. But it does cope with the off-road, should you need to come off here. And I believe my differential is actually unlocked. There we go. And... The soft tyres as well, they help. If I'm careful, you'll see the suspension is incredibly soft. Probably a little firmer on the rear, comparative to the weight and everything. It's actually a lot softer on the rear, but because there's no weight there, it acts firmer. Still, you'll see, this is what was happening on the motorway. It was rocking quite a bit, and the bushes can get grabby, so it's probably not the best place to do this, but you'll see. There we go. And admittedly, when I did tip it over before, I should probably have had the differential open for the road. But still, I didn't. We can open it now, though. And it does tip. And there's a tree there. Whoa. But really, you get the idea. It's incredibly soft. And to understand precisely how this is set up, I'll show you more of the setup. 
So here we have the setup. Now this number here is the front spring weight. That has to be fairly firm. There is a lot of weight on the front, remember. There's no real way around making that firm. And the weight has to be soft to a point. If I soften it too much, it starts sinking into the ground. It gets bouncy and it's just not worth having it that soft. Now, the wide height as well is very high. But because the springs are quite soft, it does sink down and it looks lower than that. But there is the actual travel there still. So the axle can flex if it absolutely has to, which is always useful. For damping, I'm not too sure what I'm doing with it, really. But <laughs> I've got it to work, just about. I basically looked at how an 80s Pessima was set up, and I tried to use kind of similar balance on the dampers and all that. And I've got somewhere, even though it's not the best setup in the world. Don't really know what I'm doing, admittedly. Now we have front tyre pressure at 9 psi and we're at 6. Again, there's a lot less weight over here, so it doesn't quite need as high pressure tyres. But they do help with comfort. It means the tyres can flex to get over bumps for what the suspension cannot avoid. And the track width, yeah, I've got pretty wide tyres here. I believe they're 255s, but they look cool and they have some sidewall, so... Yeah, that's why I've done that. And if I tried to extend the track width, it just wouldn't look good. Simple as that. Anyway, moving on. So, here we have the D-Series at Patricia Raceway at night. So I get a chance to test out the new spotlights. Also, I decided it would be fun to do something at night. You'll see the visibility is very good. I probably couldn't do this in an ETK 800 series without crashing it. And boy, does this have body wall. But it's not tipped yet. I did manage to tip it once around a tight corner, but it wasn't too hard to drive, and as I said, it's a work in progress. It will get fixed someday. Anyway, around these corners, I'm never going to go incredibly fast, because although it's got a V8, it's a heavy vehicle, remember, and it can really struggle to get going. Surprisingly, actually, it struggles to get to 70, but it will get there eventually. And you'll see we are moving. Um, the tip is terrible, it has to be said, but we get around the corners quite nicely and there's a lot of understeer, which also surprises me. The D-Series isn't known for its understeer as such, they're known for getting quite oversteery to me because of a firm rear leaf springs, which it just doesn't have, it's got coil springs now. So it's always going to handle a little more interestingly than your typical D-Series, just due to the softer setup, due to a more comfortable setup. And I almost throw it into a wall, but thankfully the brakes are good enough. I don't believe I changed the brakes over stock. I really should, but they are just base model D-series brakes for the time being. They get the job done. They're just not the best brakes in the world. Anyway, we're coming up here. You'll see we're really struggling to gain speed. It's got no supercharger or such on here, which is probably why it feels so sluggish. But I'm pretty sure it's not even that much faster than the inline 6 it originally had before I swapped the V8 in. Which is very strange indeed. I mean, it's still a V8, even if it's not the most powerful in the world. A naturally aspirated V8, yes, it's not a twin turbo or anything crazy like that. I would like an ETK engine in here, but then that doesn't work at the moment. And you'll see we can finally let that power go and we can finally come along the straight as there is some kind of unknown item on the road and we best avoid that. Seriously, who leaves their car in the middle of a racetrack? That's just craziness. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. So goodbye, until another day.